Hey guys, my name is Alex, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Tormach's new entry into the prosumer router market, the Tormach 24R. Now, a little over a year ago, Daytron loaned us their small form factor Neo router for use with making proven cut recipes. We found that the Neo filled a gap we didn't even know needed filled. So the question we're asking today is, can the 24R fill that gap too? I've been pretty impressed so far, so let's jump right in. The Tormach 24R has an approximately four foot by two foot travel, a 24,000 RPM water-cooled spindle, a cast iron machine frame, and it runs on Tormach's easy to use path pilot control. So the 24R looks really promising on paper, and it can be powered from a standard household 115 volt AC outlet. But there is a bit of a caveat to that, which we'll talk about later. The machine caster option also makes this machine really, really easy to move around, and we can shift it around the shop as needed. Tormach opted to go with high wind linear rails and ball screws on this machine, which is a welcome change from what we've seen on Tormach machines of the past, although we would love to see a Servo X version of this machine in the future. We also opted to outfit this machine with the Tormach vacuum table due to our success with Daytron's vacuum system. Um, there are a few quirks here and there and you sort of have to get used to using a vacuum system, but we'll talk about some tips and tricks later. One thing you might notice is that we do a lot of cutting metal in this review and there are two main reasons for that. The first being here at Saunders Machine Works, that's really the bulk of what we do. We don't do a lot of cutting in plastics and woods, other soft materials like that. The second reason being I wanted to put this machine through its paces and a router like this typically struggles with harder materials your aluminum steel things like that once I started playing with the 24R I pretty quickly realized that it could handle aluminum and steel just fine so it should go without saying that if you're a woodworker or you cut a lot of plastics things like that you should have no problem machining those on this router let's take a look at the 24R versus a machine that's much more of a traditional metalworking CNC mill there are a couple reasons I picked this to do a comparison with, one being that it's another Tormach machine and it's in a similar price bracket. It also is capable of 10,000 RPM, which is the minimum RPM on the 24R. So my idea was to run the same file on two different machines and then compare those cuts and compare those parts when they were finished and see how they stack up. One thing I want to note in this test is that brand new tools were used and they were also separate tools. I'm using a quarter inch TAS from Lakeshore Carbide on both of these. A little bit different methodology with both of them. Since the 770M is a more rigid machine, it can take heavier cuts, but it is going a little bit slower due to the lower RPM. I did decide for the roughing to let the 24R take over with its 24,000 RPM. So they're running at different speeds here. So I was surprised at how much the extra surface footage helped the 24R out, and I was able to rough out a part much quicker in aluminum with the 24R than I could with any recipe on the 770. Having the higher RPM spindle on the 24R can be great if you're doing a lot of small detail work, engraving, small tooling, things like that, and you'll see the benefits of that spindle RPM increase as your tool diameter decreases. And next up, I'm finishing with a quarter inch three flute Haas tooling end mill. I did want to add here that these are running the exact same recipe, same RPM, same chip load, all of that fun stuff. So I'm running the same file from here to the end of this segment. And as that finishing completes, we're going to do a slot on top of this rectangular boss. And as you can see, or rather, as you can hear, the 24R did chatter quite a bit on that cut, and this may be one of those scenarios where if you're doing a lot of slotting, that might be a little bit better for a traditional CNC mill style machine. But nevertheless, I was really impressed with how the 24R can machine aluminum. All right, with both parts out of the vise, it's time for our side-by-side. So the 770 definitely did a few things better than 24R, one of those being the slot that we just talked about, the extra rigidity of that machine really helps it handle those heavier cuts like that without chatter. It also had nominally better wall finishes, but really not by much. It's hard to tell and I'm nitpicking here. The wall finishes on both were really great. The last thing that the 770 did better was the accuracy of the machine. Now we're gonna post a graphic here that shows the nominal value, the 24R's value, and the 770's value that shows the variation on both the round and rectangular boss. Also worth noting for this part of the test, I did not use cutter comp, but I had the tools programmed to their effective diameter by measuring them with our Speroni and then creating the tool infusion with a tool of that diameter. 
Now on to what the 24R did better. First being, it had much better floor finishes than the 770 did, which surprised me quite a bit. The other thing the 24R did better that we talked about before was it can rough much quicker in these softer materials just due to the higher RPM capabilities. So as you've seen, the Tormach 24R can cut softer metals like aluminum. How does the 24R handle harder materials like steel? Well, let's try it out. I dropped this block of 4140 into our mod vise, and then I created an adaptive recipe that would just rough the center of this material out. Um, and I wanted to leave the other side in case the first recipe didn't work because I was a little hesitant to try and rough steel on this router. I wasn't sure if it was going to have the rigidity that I'd need. Um, and the RPM band is not great for steel because you need to be mindful of your surface footage. But I went ahead and created that and it worked on the first try. I was really impressed with how it worked. The recipe will be up on the screen here. And then I actually had to double my feed rate override and I was getting a much higher feed rate than what I'd originally programmed, and it was still cutting great. So I'm really impressed with how this router cuts even harder metals like steel, and I'll be impressed to see in the future if we play with things like stainless and titanium, some harder to machine metals on a router that typically wouldn't be able to handle this kind of material. It's taken me a little while to get used to this vacuum table, but there are a few tips and tricks that will really help you succeed when you're using it. The first one is always use downcut tooling whenever possible. Um, and this is because lateral forces aren't an issue, but vertical forces are. So if you've got a part on the table and you push it from the side, it's very hard to move. But if you put barely any force on that and sort of lift a corner up with your fingernail, it will slip immediately and you'll lose all vacuum pressure. Small tools also really help with this. A larger tool is gonna to put more tool pressure and more cutting forces at the edge of that flute. And if you're using a smaller tool, you're gonna to have less cutting forces to pull that up out of the vacuum and break your vacuum seal. Surface area, like in our super glue fixturing video, is also really important here. The more surface area you have, the larger area that vacuum is being applied over, and the more holding force that you're gonna have. Fast and light cuts when you're vacuum work holding are much better than slow and heavier cuts. Even though you may achieve the same MRR, those fast and light cuts are gonna apply less cutting pressure and keep that part vacuumed down better. Finally, even having one clamp on your part somewhere really, really helps. So I've been making our plate savers using one of our fixture plates, and I found that you can actually pull our fixture plate plugs out in the areas you want vacuum. And this is really beneficial because in places where you don't want vacuum or you need a clamp, you can thread a screw in. So I've been using screws on our plate to hold the very edges of the material down, and this just helps against that lifting force we talked about earlier. So having even one clamp anywhere on your part is really going to help you if that's an option. The first upgrade I added to our 24R was this small coolant jug and MQL system. I have a small acrylic rack on the back here, and so by holding that up and getting some coolant and air blast on the part really, really helps when you're cutting gummier materials like aluminum, where you need those chips to be evacuated and not recut. The second helpful upgrade I added was this small 3D printed bracket here, which helps keep the dust boot out of the way when you're not using it or when you're touching off tools that you plan to use with the dust boot. That way you don't have to move it completely from the machine and you don't have a dust boot dangling down in front of your workpiece. The third upgrade I added to our machine was one of our SMW fixture plates. This is actually just a prototype plate, but we do expect to have these out soon for the 24R. The benefit of our plate is that the standard vacuum table doesn't have very many bolt down locations on it. So if you don't wanna add those and machine into your vacuum table, our fixture plate just drops on top and makes a great addition. It gives you plenty of precision bores and threads, places to align your work, bolt it down, and keep it secured to your table. It's also great alongside the vacuum system. So I've been using this, like I talked about before, and actually sucking through the holes in the plate and using this fixture plate as a way to use the vacuum work holding system. Last but not least, this machine is really messy. So we added these acrylic guards around the perimeter of the machine, and that just kind of keeps most of the chips inside and not on the floor where I have to clean them up later. So let's get into what we don't love about the 24R. First and foremost, optioning this machine without an ATC is the largest handicap that you'll run into. I find myself bashing my knuckles off of the linear rails every time, so of course I was really excited to hear that Tormach had just finished developing an ATC for the 24R, and those should be available soon. Adding an ATC would actually be my number one upgrade for this machine, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who has it in their budget. The addition of an ATC and ETS is a great combination that's sure to reduce cycle time and just make the 24R much easier to run. Next up, I found that the 24R runs out of spindle long before it runs out of machine rigidity. Um, and I understand that they were trying to go for a machine that could plug into a regular 115 volt outlet, and so the spindle could probably be a little more powerful. Uh, but here's the kicker. 
you need a 220 volt outlet to run the vacuum pump. So it would be great if we saw that X version with servos and maybe an option for a more powerful spindle on this machine, especially since you already need the higher power requirement if you're gonna run the vacuum pump. Not a problem with the machine per se, but something you'll have to get used to. Homing the machine when at Y positive is a mistake you'll regret every single time. And I will demonstrate that now. A few moments later. The 24R can also be a bit messy. And we're not just picking on the 24R here because this is true of all routers in this category. Uh, and the acrylic guards here help a lot, but you also have to be really careful to cover up any outlets you're not using, especially if you're machining conductive materials. The 200 inches per minute travel on the 24R does seem to be plenty, but sometimes this machine struggles with acceleration. So toolpaths with a lot of linking moves or 3D surfacing sometimes take a lot longer to machine in reality than Fusion gives in their estimate. And this is just because it can't accelerate as quickly as Fusion thinks it may be able to. Uh, so something to watch out for. I don't think it's really a problem. And in my opinion, a totally fair trade-off for the rigidity of this machine. From the time I've spent with it, the 24R is a capable router with a large machining travel, rigid frame, and intuitive control. The vacuum work holding system is a big plus, especially if you're machining large sheets of material, and the ability to use that in tandem with one of our fixture plates is really a great use for this machine. Where the 24R really shines is in the cut, but the lack of an ATC or even just some kind of quick change tooling system really hinders the workflow between cuts. It's not trying to be a Daytron Neo. The 24R is a rigid router with a large machining area, and with a couple little tweaks that we've talked about, I think that this machine will leave off in our shop, where the Daytron left off just fine. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>